um, I will speak about the office suit usage in the canton of Geneva, where I'm coming from. Uh, my name is Cyril Roiroy. I'm working for the state of Geneva. Uh, and we have prepared this uh, presentation in, in interaction with uh, Paul Auberson, who is the head of uh, continuous training of the teachers. So he has also a lot of things to say about uh, LibreOffice and the usage of LibreOffice. So if you expect to see uh, technical things or coding, you will be disappointed because it's mainly on the usage perspective. But I think it's interesting to s share how we use it uh, in, uh, in the canton of Geneva. So that's where I want to go through uh, today. A small introduction to see where to understand where I'm coming from and what is the canton of Geneva or the teaching part of the canton of Geneva. Um, I wanted to uh, bring you to from the end user perspective, so how it's used, and from the institutional perspective. Uh, and then which framework do we, uh, did we put in place to enable the creation of pedagogical resources and how we participate um, f with the, within the community, uh, mainly by sharing the pedagogical resources, and a very short conclusion. So, um, I need to make a small introduction about the public instruction department. That's where I'm working uh, for. Um, and there are around 70,000 students, uh, around 70 teachers, a little bit more than 13,000 computers, and more than two-thirds are PCs. So there are still a lot of uh, Macs, because that's for historical reasons, and still used for uh, multimedia courses. I'm working for the Service École Média, which is uh, a service within the public instruction department, made by several services, and we help teachers to um, uh, integrate uh, information technologies within their teaching, train them, and we uh, prepare and maintain the computers. When I say we, it's not me, it's the service which I'm working for. So the, the school is structured, uh, I simplify it slightly. We have cycle one and, and two, one and two for primary school and then uh, secondary school and then it's a non-mandatory school from 15 onwards. I need to make a short um, deviation, a short uh, Parenthesis about uh, Linux migration, because it's within our environment. All the primary schools, that means one PC per uh, classroom, is under Ubuntu right now. So it's a Linux distribution, so that's around 170 schools. A little bit more than 2,000 PCs. So I'm talking about cycle one and two. So that's why it's all uh, brownish, that's the Ubuntu color. Uh, it's filled completely, so it's 100% right now. It concerns 2,500 teachers and a little bit more than 30,000 students, age, age from 4 to 11. And we are currently, I mean this uh, year, uh, running out uh, another uh, uh, distribution, or it's still Ubuntu, but Care Ubuntu, on the cycle orientation, so that's a cycle 3. That's concerned 20 schools, 2,000 teachers, around 1,000 PCs, and a little bit more than 13,000 students. Why is it so a little PCs? Because there are uh, some Macs, Macintosh, so classroom with Macintosh, and um, there are some classrooms dedicated to teaching languages, which rely on one specific software, which needs Windows 7 to run. And then the post obligatoire is ongoing and we'll continue to uh, plan that. So uh, why I say that is that LibreOffice is the only office suit available on, on Ubuntu and it loads very quickly. So that's one of, the, uh, one of the feedback we have from the teachers. It is very quick to open, uh, to react, and it's uh, very stable. And user perspective. So um, we have this open suite uh, and which is the only uh, office suite on education computer since ages. 2008 was uh, OpenOffice and then uh, LibreOffice. Um, we propose uh, continuous training. Uh, and there is a wide range of, of courses and uh, actually, if I speak only about the technological courses, um, including, for example, LibreOffice or others, LibreOffice is not even mentioned anymore in the title of the courses because it's trivial, we teach 
not uh, how to use uh, Impress, but how to make presentations, how to uh, calculate your grades, and not how to uh, use Calc, edit photo with GIMP, and so on and so forth. So all the links, I, I will give you the presentation, and every links are working, so you can go and see. Uh, every time there is a link, you can have the, the source uh, of the information. Um, one of the positive feedback we had specifically about LibreOffice is the draw, uh, the uh, drawing tools, because it's very easier for simple documents that are used a lot um, uh, for primary uh, school teachers, because it's very easy to mix images, to align them, to put some text, to change the format, and it's very uh, simple, whereas uh, using a word processor, you need to understand the paragraph, how it's anchored to the paragraph and not to the page and whatever. So it's, uh, this, this was a really uh, uh, a very, good, um, very good news for the teachers. So that was from the user perspective. From the institution perspective, is it okay? I don't speak too fast. Huh? Um, it's installed on every education PC. So the, the version for this year is 4.2. It varies from Mac and Linux, and uh, it's the last um, stable release. I'm not sure which version exactly. And it's on every administrative PC on the education department. It's installed as well, and only by request for the other administrative PCs of the state of Geneva. Because in the state of Geneva, you have um, education department, but also other departments. So the other departments, they can request uh, OpenOffice or LibreOffice to be directly installed on their uh, computer, but it's by default installed on the education department administrative PCs because they have to deal with uh, the education world, education PCs which have only uh, LibreOffice. We propose to uh, install the same version, in this case the 4.2.6 at home, and it's uh, oopla, sorry, it's available for every uh, operating system. Just click on one link to uh, what's that? <laughs> sorry, um, and you can download it. You can download it for ah, no, it really wants to. Oh, it doesn't work, the network doesn't work, okay, anyway. So you can download for Mac, Windows, and Linux, and it comes with, you can separately download 300 megabytes of uh, clip arts. Um, the, one of the advantages for us is that the same office suit, suite, suit, is available on every PC, and that enables, um, that ease the training side of it, because uh, every computer has the same, uh, uh, and we don't have to teach every software, in the past, there was a lot of different um, office suits available and we had to answer to teach, um, I don't know, uh, Word uh, on Mac, what is the word processor on Mac, uh, text, whatever. Uh, and nowadays there is only this LibreOffice, so it's easier, and it facilitates also the, the move, uh, if a teacher moves from one uh, uh, school to another, he will have the same environment with the same tools. We think also that it participates to, uh, well, it's not, my friend, my English is not very good now, sorry, to a democratic school by the possibility to give freely the tool to students, also teachers and parents and citizens. Um, they can use at no cost, that's also very important, uh, outside of schools. It's within uh, open format by default, ODF, and it guarantees long-term availability. You know all that, and the four, uh, liberty, freedoms, of the free softwares that you know also. So that was from the institution perspective. Before talking about sharing pedagogical resources, talk about the, the framework that we set um, in order to enable teachers to share their pedagogical resources. Um, we define the conditions, and uh, one of them is um, to use open standard formats. So we have a directive, hmm, a rule, that says uh, we want to promote uh, free softwares, and that's what we do actually by migrating to uh, Ubuntu, by promoting um, teaching with free softwares, by enabling download at home, by inst uh, organizing install parties, and so on and so forth. Um, it's uh, combined with the use of uh, Creative Commons licenses. So we have uh, 
uh, one uh, explanation about how to publish pedagogical content with uh, this uh, CC license. Um, from the student perspective, uh, that's a more recent uh, rule. Teachers cannot ask, cannot force a student to give back um, a homework within a proprietary format. He's not allowed to do that. But okay, if they agree to work on Doc, they can, for example, Doc. Yeah. But uh, it's, uh, it's uh, nicely asked to uh, promote and uh, use uh, open, uh, open formats where possible. How do we um, participate to the community? Mainly, we do what we know how to do, that is create pedagogical resources. And uh, we produce a lot of we. When I say we, it's not me, it's the teachers. Uh, a lot of resources, and mostly in uh, ODF format. And they are freely available on uh, a lot of websites. I just took two for, to give you an example. Uh, we have for teachers a monthly almost monthly newsletter about LibreOffice and tips and tricks, how to create a document to manage your grades, how to make a simple presentation, how to uh, things that answer very concretely, step by step uh, to the question. And then they uh, finish this uh, course with a document that they can use with, uh, with their classroom. Uh, another example is uh, the website Petit Bazaar, which is used for the primary school uh, teachers. They can log in and then they have access to a lot of resources and, uh, and uh, scenarios, pedagogical scenarios. And then there are resources about the use of LibreOffice or how to use LibreOffice. We have the Fish Utilisateur, so I cannot click there to show it, but it's a basically a list of a PDF files that on one a sheet, it explains one point very concretely with screenshots. Uh, or there are the MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. Uh, I, um, if you want to, if you have only one link to go to, it's one of these one, uh, because it really makes sense. It's a combination, it's an online course actually, about one specific topic with uh, videos, and then when you end up, you understood how it works, and you end up with a document that you can use most of the time. Um, we communicate about free softwares and ben their benefits. That's what I'm actually doing today. I was at the Rencontre Mondiale du Logiciel Libre. And um, a little bit we help when we can the, the software to evolve. For example, we use uh, DMAT, which is a little add-on for the addition of uh, mathematical formulas, speci specifically for math teachers. And it integrates within uh, LibreOffice. So we uh, participate uh, regularly, and that's one of the examples that I take. That's, I think, two or three years ago, one uh, functionality was missing, so we found some, uh, some money to get this functionality and then give it back to the, to the community. Another example is um, a cursive font that will uh, release uh, soon. Uh, it will be in open type and it will license uh, Creative Commons. So that's only two examples. That's one of the direction I'd like to, uh, to uh, emphasize, emphasize this year. It's to help a little bit more uh, within the software perspective. So that's about it. Uh, we're close to the conclusion. So the conclusion, I, I um, also interacted with um, Paul Auberson, who, um, who let me know, but there is no need for a conclusion, actually. Nothing special to say. LibreOffice does what it expected to do, point. So that will be my conclusion. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, that was uh, condensed, huh? <laughs> okay, thanks a lot.